We've all viewed Padre Pio's life from the outside. In a tremendous degree, we've seen miracles and all sorts of incredible happenings of Padre Pio. But what about his spirituality, viewing all of these things from the inside, so to speak? What was Padre Pio's connection to Our Lady? So that is what we're going to be having a look at, particularly today. Hello friends of Following Padre Pio and welcome to our channel. On this channel, we, through a series of very short stories, we investigate the incredible life of our great saint, Padre Pio, who was a Capuchin friar, a tremendous mystic, and an incredible miracle. Miracles like we cannot believe. Do stay tuned to find out more about Padre Pio and also to see what his intercession could do for either you or for someone you love. Just a reminder that we do have a Mass every Friday. Said we bring intentions, everyone's intentions, to Padre Pio in this Mass. If you wish your intentions to be included, just see the video on the end screen how to do that. We encourage everyone to be part of our Padre Pio apostolate. And you can do that by liking our video and sharing the video with your friends and colleagues. We'd really appreciate your help in that way. Now, in today's talk, the source of the talk is from the book Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, the first congress on the studies of Padre Pio's spirituality. And this particular talk is taken from one given by a Father Bernardino of Siena, who was a postulator general of the Order of Capuchins. So it's a pretty high up position, and he's speaking from that authority. And Father Bernardino, as we have already seen, he tells us that our Lord's life was just incredibly and intimately connected with his mother's life, with Mary, our mother's life. And while this was, of course, while he was here on the, on the earth. But we have, want to investigate just how close was the link? And did this link also extend to after our Lord's life on this earth? Now, from the very first day, when our Lord was born, Mary the mother and Saint Joseph, they both had to flee for, to, to Egypt until safe conditions returned. So just imagine that with a baby literally days old, having to flee on the, the back of a donkey to a foreign country, a different language, trying to make a living to survive there. But she did not waver. That was her commitment to our Lord right from the beginning. And then Our Lady, for the next 33 years, she was able to contemplate our Lord and to ponder and to internalize every word and every, every move that the God-man, that Jesus made while he was on this earth. The apostles just had three years. And during those three years, we see the miraculous change. So imagine 33 years, the incredible change that must have happened in Our Lady. And she also knew our Lord's thinking so intimately. You can see this in the example where she told at the wedding feast in Cana, do whatever he tells you. And by this, she was kind of preempting his first public miracle. Because our Lord said, my time is not yet here, is not yet come. And she said, do whatever he tells you. And so the miracle happened. The water changed into wine. And that was at the preempting, as we said, of Our Lady. And Our Lady also saw that her son was almost thrown off the cliff in her, their hometown, Nazareth. So all of these things, they must have weighed on her. This must have weighed on her heavily. Because through all of this, our Lord said, a sword of sorrow would pierce her heart. And ultimately, as we know, this culminated in Our Lady seeing her son crucified right there in front of her. So imagine that, which mother would not be in absolute agony, seeing their child butchered right in front of them. But she stayed, she did not run away like the other apostles. She never turned away, she never doubted, even with the sword of sorrow in her heart. And certainly she was present there at the very birthday of our church, of the church, Pentecost. She was there with the other apostles. And so in this new church, if the apostles, they were illiterate fishermen to a large degree, if they did not understand something, the persecutions, the agonies that the early church had to go through, 
Who could they turn to who had this intimate knowledge of her son, Our Lady? She, she had contemplated him, of course, for 33 years, as we said earlier, and she was able to advise in a great degree. And she was able to advise in a very motherly way, because she was the mother of Jesus. And she was also able to advise in a very wise way, because she was the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And in a filial way, she could advise as well as the daughter of God the Father. And so through this all, Our Lady remained absolutely true. Even if a sword were to be plowed right through her heart, she never waved it. And so she was greatly honored in the early church. And we can see evidence of this. Two, between 250 and 280 AD, they found a papyrus script with the first known prayer to Our Lady, in which she was honored as the Theokos, the Mother of God. So we can see that she held a very prestigious position in the early church. And was she also the mother of the mystical body? So does this agree with Padre Pio's views on Our Lady? Here we're going to go back to what Father Bernardino explains. And he says this was exactly Padre Pio's attitude to Mary, his mother. And he gives us various examples to, to illustrate this. Already we have seen, referred to the words of the Heavenly Mother, Padre Pio's words. This most tender mother, in her great knowledge, mercy and goodness. So, she really look, he, so he really looks up to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And also he tells us that she introduced him, introduced Padre Pio to the mystery of the cross. And he, there's some writing to Father Augustino from Padre Pio in which he says, To obtain from her, most holy son, the grace to penetrate the mystery of the cross, to inebriate ourselves with Jesus' sufferings. So he sees her as a tremendous intercessor, someone who could go to our Lord and was able to win from him the grace for Padre Pio. And we know that Padre Pio was intimately linked to this understanding, the mystery of the cross, because he also carried the stigmata on his hand, a tremendous cross for him. And Padre Pio also said that she was the very first to practice the gospel in all perfection. And advises, let us always stay close to such a dear mother. So all of these things are showing Padre Pio's spirituality, his very close connection to his mother. There were other times when Padre Pio spoke about his heavenly mother and he was hardly able to contain the emotion that he felt in his heart for her. So when he told people of Our Lady of Fatima, he could not hold back the tears. So once again, we know Fatima is illustrating Our Lady's motherly admonitions to all of us now, to the church as we exist, always as a mother. And of course, Padre Pio, as we know, was so attached to the rosary as well. He was referred to as the living rosary. So he always had a rosary in his hands. He was not seen without a rosary. And once when his superior wanted to know how many prayers, how many rosaries he had said that day, Padre Pio said, well, I, I, I must tell the truth to my superior. I said 34. So that's 34 or five decades each. And he would also refer to his rosary as his weapon. So he, for one, once he said to a friar, bring me my weapon. The friar didn't know what he's talking about. And he said his rosary was his weapon in the spiritual battle. So now when he gave up his soul as well, when Padre Pio died, he was with his rosary in his hand. And he died hanging on tightly to his rosary with the names, repeating these names, Jesus, Mary, Jesus, Mary, on his lips right to the last moment. It's with his rosary and the names of Jesus and Mary. That's how he died. And Father Bernardino, he writes and he concludes that Padre Pio, through all of this, he left a message for us today in a world so shaken by a crisis in faith, as he said. And Padre Pio indicates the obligatory ways of the rebirth that it has to come. It is of us and of the church, of course. And he says, part of which is 
with the church as mother and also the mother of the church. These are two obligatory things he concludes. Please do join us next time. We're going to have a talk on another Father Modestino, his impressions and experiences with Padre Pio. Please do join us for that video.